We're going to now be looking at the comparator with hysteresis. Op amps can be used as comparators which compare two voltages to determine which one is larger. If the positive input voltage to the op amp VP is larger than the negative input voltage VN, then the output voltage will be a high, logic one. And if our VP, which is V positive, is smaller than our VN, the voltage, the output voltage will be logic zero. So it'll be low. We can think of this as like VP, the VN is above VP here. So VP, if it is, gr is smaller, right? Cause it's smaller than what's on top of it, then we are lower at zero. Otherwise we are higher at one. To reduce errors in the compared design when the input signal is noisy, hysteresis can be added using positive feedback around the op amp shown in our figure seven. So the positive feedback is gonna look like this and that will reduce errors uh, with noise. So instead of going for the negative, we're going for the positive. Um, this causes the comparator to compare the input signal to two different reference voltages, depending on whether the input signal VN is low and rising or high and falling. And it helps prevent the comparator from changing its decision because of any noise of our V in. These high and low reference voltages are given by the following. So we have our V OH and then we have our VOL and it's being multiplied by the R1 and then our R1 plus our R2. Note that our high output voltage VOH is typically close to our positive power supply and then the low output voltage VOL is going to be typically close to the negative power supply. Key concept is that op amps have a very high open loop voltage gain, typically a greater than 100 dB, so it only takes a small difference in voltage, typically less than 5 millivolts, between the plus and minus inputs of our op amp to cause the outputs between to switch between voltage output high and then voltage output low. And so we can look at this. Um, let's do a four millivolt one. So if we if we we're gonna we possibly might change our voltage or anything inside of our waveform, but we'll do that in a second. Um, looking at the lab documents, we can see that it is all set. My partner has done his measurements. He uses a one kilo ohm and a four kilo ohm resistor. And for this test, um, we are going to construct our circuit, measure the high and low reference voltages, and then use a four VPP triangle wave at one kilohertz. So we're going to have to change this back to one kilohertz. Um, I'm not sure if this will make a difference for this one, one kilohertz. And we'll just make them both triangle waves, even though I think we're only gonna be using the first wave gen. So we have triangle waves now so that it's easier to see them. Um, and then we have a plus minus 10%. And again, our resistor values here are 1K and 4K. However, um, we don't have a 4K, so we're gonna need to make two resistors in series with a two kilo ohm resistor. And so now let's look at the breadboard. This is our previous circuit from the last video linked in the playlist below the like button where we dealt with a high pass filter. So now what we're gonna want to do is we obviously need to change what we're going to be um, looking at circuit wise. So we're gonna have to do a lot of changes. I'm going to make sure that the wave gen is off. So our master enable is off. Everything is off so that way we don't have to uh, accidentally deal with a short circuit. And now I'm going to remove these wires in here just to clear up some space. Also going to remove these resistors. These are the 10 kilo ohm resistors I'm putting away and these are the 6.9. And then here is our 4.72 microfarad capacitor. That's gonna go over there. And so we just have our basic circuit here. I'm also going to remove the two wires that are not our power wires because these are gonna change as well. So all we have is our op amp in here and then our power wires. And so now we can really look at this. Um, we know that we are gonna have voltage input going into our V negative. So we are going to take these two wires. This is our voltage input. It's gonna go into our V negative, just like that. And we know from the pinout that that is the V negative. And next, we're gonna put this monitoring wire for the analog discovery two in here. Um, this blue one is gonna to go to our output, so we can put that in there as well. That's gonna monitor our output. And now we have our VP, and this is the next node. And then we know that we have our R1 going straight to ground. And our R1 from the lab report that my partner did, he said that our R1 is one kilo ohm of resistance. So I'm just going to 
pull out a one kilo ohm resistor and then it is going to go straight into ground which is our negative rail so we're gonna go from here into our ground rail and that is plugged in so that is going to be in our pin 3 here it's going to be in that one and then go straight to our ground I'm just going to move these wires a little bit closer to minimize any parasitic capacitance or current loss and so yeah this is what we have now we can connect our R2 to our V out we know our R2 is going to be 4 kilo ohms of resistance I don't have 4 kilo ohms so I'm going to take these 2 kilo ohm resistors and then I'm going to combine them in series so we will just go one at a time. We're going to bend this and we're going to go from this into just some random column that doesn't have anything inside of it. So I'll make the leads pretty short and I'm going to put them in here like this. So that goes from RV positive or not RV positive, sorry, R voltage. Um, the, yeah, that is the V positive. So the actual V plus, I believe it's called plus input on the op amp thing. So that's how that's going to look like. And then from here, we are going to connect this other one in series. So we're going to have the same column, and then it's going to go into our voltage output. And it's going to look like that. And so that is our circuit complete. And now we can look back at our waveform. So we're going to run our waved in run, we're going to run our scope one, and then master enable is on. And that is a pretty insane difference. So our high reference should be only one volt, and the low reference um, be a little bit less. But this is definitely different, and our frequency seems to be going pretty crazy. So if we change this to like a 4.5 volts, um, and then we change this to a negative 4.5 volts, we can see that that comes up more. Um, and if we change this to two volts, and then we change this to negative two volts, we see, wow, that we get a, a lot right there. So if we do that, um, all we want our one voltage um, to be within spec. So if we were to buy this, we still get some error. Um, if we go to 500 millivolts, if we, we, can go, we can go this low, 500 here, negative 500 here, we can see that we are getting some crazy lines. Um, let's go back up out of the millivolt range. So we'll go 4.5 here, and then we will go a negative 4.5 here. Uh, we're still in the millivolts for our output. So we'll go negative 5 and 5. I don't believe that's getting any better. If we go back to 1 volt, negative 1 volt, it does not seem to be getting any better. Um, but it looks like we are very close in how the lines are lining up. And that is how I believe, if we've done it correctly, that is how we would do our comparator with our hysteresis. Um, that is going to be how we set it up on our breadboard as well. And so that is all for this one. Next we're going to be looking at an oscillator in closing up this lab.